Hi, I'm Larry Puckett, the DCC Guy. Well, as you probably noticed by the fireworks at the beginning of this video, I've now hit the 40,000 subscriber mark. So thanks a lot, and uh, I hope all of you new guys are enjoying the videos. So now let's move on and get it on up to 50,000. Hit that little red uh, subscribe button, and when the little bell comes up, click on it and click all. Now, last week we took a look at assembling and installing the KD number 309 electromagnetic uncoupler for use on your model railroad. Let me also point out that in addition to the HO00 scale version, the 309, they also make an O scale version and an HON3 version. So if you're interested in those other scales, go ahead and go to the KD website and look up their uncouplers and they'll have a listing there for those different varieties. Someone also asked in the comments whether or not there were other versions or other makes of these available. Now I'm not aware of any, there might be some others available. So if anybody out there knows of another uh, available electromagnetic uncoupler, please add it to the comments and we can pass that along to other folks who want to know that. Also sometime in the last 40 years, uh, Model Railroader ran an article showing how to actually build an electromagnetic uncoupler just like or similar to the KD version. So if you have access to the Model Railroader archives online or if you have access to a large collection of old Model Railroaders, you can probably find that without any problem. So now let's go ahead and move on to the subject today and that is adding DC power for the electromagnetic uncoupler. Okay, now one of the, the realities of all this is that before we can actually power up the electromagnetic uncoupler and provide the control mechanism, all that for it, we have to have a DC power source on the layout or under the layout. And what I decided to do in this case, I need both a 12 volt power source in order to control the mechanism that I use for timing the, the amount of time that the device is turned on. And also I need a 16 volt power source in order to provide the power for the electromagnet. So let's uh, take a look at how to install both a 12 volt and a 16 volt DC power supply under the layout to provide the power and control for the KD electromagnetic uncouplers. First off, because I'm using KD under the track magnets, they require something like 16 volts at about 3 amps in order to power them. And that's a pretty hefty uh, power supply. And it's obviously more than you need for a 12 volt bus. So what you could do is have one 16 volt plug-in power supply and another one that is a 12 volt plug-in power supply, and you could actually run two separate power buses. But there's a way to get around doing that. I'm going to have a 16 volt uh, power bus, and I'm going to drop a 12 volt bus off of that. Okay, so the first thing I've done is I've taken some of this zip cord that I've shown you before. This is the same zip cord that I've used in, in other scenarios. And I use this uh, a lot on my model railroad. Now, the big difference with wiring a DC power bus from a DCC power bus is you don't have to worry about twisting the, uh, the wires. So you can just run these straight through there. But what I'm going to do with this one, I'm going to run this zip cord, and this is 14 gauge zip cord, it's audio cable used for uh, installing stereo systems in houses. Now as far as providing power to the bus itself, I have a barrel connector that matches this male here for on the power supply that I'm going to be using. And I can just plug that in. It also is a great thing to have these because if you ever have a power supply go bad on you, it makes it quick and easy to change it out. So what I've done is I've connected a blue and a white wire and I'm going to connect this to the DC power bus. And that's going to feed power from the power supply through the connector and directly into the bus. And I'm going to do that. I've already made a split here and the uh, white wire here, which will be the positive 
wire is going to go to this red one because I have designated that as positive. You can see the red uh, connector is positive, black is negative. And on this uh, zip cord, I don't know if you can see it, but there is a slight difference in color. This is red and that is silver. Okay, so you can tell the difference quite easily between them. And I just use red as positive. Okay, so I can do that. Now, I've got my uh, suitcase connector and I'm just going to pop that on here and slide that over the wire. Okay, and I'm going to insert the white positive wire on this barrel plug. Okay, so let's go ahead and crimp these wires together. Like that. And that electrical connection is complete. Okay. Now let's do the other side. Oh, here I've got one already. And we can just open that up a little bit to uh, make it easy to fit over the wire. Slide that on, push it into place, and crimp it. And it's all done without any soldering at all. Okay, and now all I have to do is make that connection and my power bus now has full power throughout the length of it, okay? Because I've already made that connection as well. So that, that's the basic uh, 16 volt uh, power bus. Let's go ahead and finish with adding the 12 volt section. This is uh, called a buckboard and it allows you to put in a higher DC voltage and output a lower one. And you just use this little brass screw here, or bronze, and uh, turn that, and it will allow you to adjust the voltage. And you can buy these off of eBay for about five or six bucks each, and uh, I've used different sizes of these. So what I'm gonna do is attach this uh, bus, power bus that I've already wired up with my uh, buckboard, and I'm going to wire it into the 16-volt uh, power uh, bus here so that we can create a, an additional 12-volt power bus. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we go about doing that. I've already opened up a little bit here, and what I'm going to do is the same thing. I'm going to take my suitcase connectors, and I'm going to make this connection here to the power bus, okay, the higher voltage power bus, and that will allow me to have the 16 volt power bus and the 12 volt power bus adjacent to one another here under the layout. And then if I need to power my, uh, my KD electromagnets, I've got the 16 volt bus for that. And if I need my uh, 12 volt bus for other accessories and the like, I have it right, but right there. Now, just so we can keep everything straight, I've designated the white as positive uh, to match the uh, red here and the blue to go with the black, okay? So let's go ahead and make those uh, connections here. So I've already split out some wire so we could uh, make it easier to work with these. Okay, and pop it into place. Okay, so let's go ahead and put the end here into place so that we can crimp it. Slide it in all the way and go ahead and crimp. Okay. Okay, and we'll get the second one and crimp it on. Okay. 
There we go. There. These are slightly different from the 3M uh, suitcase connectors I've shown you before. This particular color here, the blue ones, are specifically for 14 to 18 gauge wires. And that's both wires. They are not a step down type connector. Okay. So this is great for connecting two wires that are in the range of 14, 16, or 18 gauges. So we got that connection made now. So we now have a bus that will be the 16 gauge bus, and we have another bus here that will be the 12 gauge bus. So let's check it out and see how close I came. I've gone ahead and hooked up the, uh, the red and the black wires to my uh, voltmeter, and we'll check that out. Now I need to go ahead and plug in uh, the power supply. Okay, we've gone hot now, and you can see we're reading 11.98 volts. Now I'll just show you here, I can adjust that voltage. So now we're at 12 volts. On, I can run it on up, but I'm going to bring it back down to around 12 volts. Okay, can't get any closer than that. So we now have a 12 volt power bus. We have the uh, 16 volt larger power bus here. So now we're ready to install the power bus under the layout. And then we'll be able to provide power to our high power uh, KD electromagnets built into the track. And we have our uh, 12 volt power bus for anything else. Well, that's a wrap for today's video. Now in a previous video, I showed you how to do a more complete installation of a DC accessory power bus, and I'll put a link to that here at the end of this video, as well as some others that I've done relative to the subject. Now, one thing I do want to point out is some of the, of the parts are not readily available once all electronics goes out of business, which is any day now they're going to wrap up uh, selling off their existing stock. So you might not be able to find some of those quick splices that I mentioned in the video. However, I will point out that those kind of things are available on eBay and on Amazon. So feel free to do a search there for whatever you're looking for. And I know that these things are available because I have bought, uh, for example, some of the 3M suitcase connectors off of Amazon. And I have seen the others listed on both eBay and Amazon. So don't give up just because all electronics is shutting down their operation because these parts are still available. Okay, so that's it for today's video. What we'll be taking a look at in the next video is how you go about adding the control mechanism and the push buttons and that kind of thing in order to give you the controls over the electromagnetic uncoupler. So in that video, in the next video, we'll show you how to do that. And then I'll give you a demonstration on the layout of how these electromagnetic uncouplers actually work. So have a great weekend, have a great week, and I'll see you here next week with another video from the DCC guy. Bye now.